you're planning to build your Predator 212, you're obviously going to be doing a governor removal to get more top speed, more horsepower. It just frees up the motor in general, you know, especially taking out the gears on the inside. You know, you're going to be removing a lot of rotating mass, which allows the engine to rev really high and just overall perform a lot better, right? But yeah, I think a lot of people see it as this amazing free mod, which it totally is. But there's also consequences that come with that that I don't think a lot of people take the right precautions and they just easily overlook all those things and then they blow up motors left and right. And you know, not only are you spending a lot of money on you know getting a new motor and then doing the same process of taking out the governor, blowing it up, but it's also, you know, from a safety standpoint, with an engine literally right next to you as you're sitting in a go-kart or it's underneath you in a mini bike and you're revving the piss out of it it's it's not safe you would be blowing holes in the block you know you've got a flywheel that's not capable of revving that high which is why they put those uh, limitations from the factory so if you're going to be doing a governor removal make sure that you take the precautions um, upgrade the rest of the components that enable this motor to really handle all that RPM. You're going to be able to have a reliable motor if you upgrade you know, those components that are weak, but you're going to see more horsepower, you're going to see it rev a lot faster, higher, because you know everything that you're doing to the motor just allows it to just free up and you know, you're not just upgrading or letting it rev higher, you're upgrading a lot of things to just help it move more efficiently. So with these motors, there are quite a few things that make it pretty limited. You know, once you free up or take off the governor, the thing that happened to me actually was my flywheel, one of the bolts backed out and it exploded my ignition coil and caused metal to go flying everywhere. And it even hit me in the helmet and stuff, which is why I'm saying, it's not that safe, you know, when you're revving it that high and, you know, especially for someone like me or if you guys are interested in go-kart drifting, you're going to live at the edge of the RPM range the entire time. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind, especially, you know, people with mini bikes that are revving it really high. You know, if you race these motors, you're going to rev it really high. So being at the top of the rev range for very long, you know, you're going to want to upgrade your flywheel, um, it's gonna be billet, it's gonna be lighter, it's gonna be, it's gonna allow the engine to just produce better horsepower in general because you're lightening up the mass that's rotating, but also you're increasing the, the magnet that gives a better spark in general too. So upgrading your flywheel is gonna be huge for ensuring the safety, but also making your engine produce more horsepower more efficiently. Next, you know, at, internally, there are a few components that are gonna limit you. Um, your rod, of course, cannot handle the, the amount of force that's being produced at such a high RPM range. So you're gonna want to upgrade that to a billet rod. And then with that, you know, of course, um, you're gonna wanna upgrade your push rods and your valve springs. Those two things are fairly cheap and they are going to really help making sure that there's not valve float. They're gonna make sure that the valves are shutting properly, giving you the best compression and um, function at the high RPM ranges. Because, you know, as it gets higher, you know, things are just going crazy and you wanna make sure that you have strong enough components that keep it very consistent at those high RPM ranges. Last thing that's also with the valve train is actually gonna be your, um, your rockers. You're gonna want to upgrade to Champion rockers or some other rockers that's better than the OEM ones because even though they seem strong, I've seen them crack multiple times. And the last thing you need is for them to crack on you when you're revving high. So. Aside from that, the rest of it is up to you. Whatever carb you want to go with, exhaust, whether you want to port the head, whether you want to put a bigger cam in it, 
you know, all that kind of stuff is up to you, whether you want to do flat top piston, which is a great option, super cheap, and it's, uh, you know, kind of an OEM plus upgrade. So, you know, but the essential things are flywheel, push rods, valve springs, rockers, and your piston rod. So, um, make sure you do those things. That's basically like the stage two upgrade. It's not that stage one is a bad upgrade. It definitely allows a lot more horsepower, but you know, when you do stage one, you kind of do the governor removal at the same time, but just make sure you do the stage two plus, you know, doing all those upgrades. You're going to spend, you know, a good amount of money doing it, but it's going to save you money in motors. It's going to save you time because you're building a reliable motor, but something that can rev high efficiently and reliably all the time. So, um, you know, that's basically what I've done on this motor. I basically built a bulletproof package that will just allow me to rev high all the time, not worry about a single thing. If you guys have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.